Hey there, hey there. So on today's episode, we talk about uh, Ray J and the Kardashians again. <laughs> um, how about, are you in the customer prevention business? Um, something controversial that you need to do in your business right now. And of course, my special, special message for Devin. So um, come join me in a, in a second. It's gonna be a hoot. Here we go. Let's go. Welcome to the Million Dollar Equation Podcast, a podcast about the easiest, fastest way to build a million dollar business based on the best selling book, The Million Dollar Equation. If you love business, each episode reveals all of the core fundamental essentials for growth. Now, here's your host, Rochelle Shaw. Hey there, hey there, hey there. Welcome to the Million Dollar Equation podcast. Uh, my name is Rochelle Shaw and I'm your host. <laughs> and so I've been in the entrepreneurial space for over 30 years. So I only had one job in my life and then I bought the company and uh, bought and sold four different businesses since then. And I've been coaching entrepreneurs for the last 15, 16 years. Um, I've coached in over nine countries. I've spoken in over eight countries, uh, helping entrepreneurs build their own million dollar business. I wrote the book, The Million Dollar Equation, uh, The Million Dollar Equation for Doctors. And my new book that's coming out uh, here in a couple of months is called The Million Dollar Equation for Startups. And um, I'm just having fun. Now, looking at everything that goes on in the world and relating it to business, um, I often call this my love letter to businesses. Um, this is where I just give back and have a whole bunch of fun. So I hope that you are enjoying it. If you are, if you're watching it on YouTube, please subscribe. If you are downloading it anywhere you listen to podcasts, please subscribe and rate it. Let me know what you think. If you think I suck, please say that too, uh, because that's the only way that I get better. Um, and uh, let, let's just have a good time. I love saying um, so don't Toastmaster me again and tell me, you know, I said it 36 times. It's just a holding word to get to, ah, stop it, stop it, right? Um, and that leads us to today's episode in what's going on in the news, right? So a couple days ago, I read a story about Ray J, the singer. He is Brandy, the R&B, a uh, huge artist uh, back in the 80s and the 90s. And so Ray J is her brother. Okay, and let's kind of connect the dots in this puzzle if you don't know. Um, so the Kardashians, what really rose them to fame was two things. Um, number one, uh, when OJ killed his wife or was accused of killing his wife because he wasn't convicted. But when OJ did it, <laughs> right, one of his lawyers was Robert Kardashian and he was Kim and the crew's father. So that was the first thing that kind of made them rise to fame. And the second thing was that Kim was the stylist to Brandy, right? And so uh, Brandy saying, I wanna love you down. Yeah, cool R&B song. Um, and so Kim was her stylist because she had style back then. Well, Kim also uh, had a relationship with Brandy's brother, Ray J. Um, and that's who the whole sex tape leak was all Kim and Ray J. Okay? So now I'm sure you know who I'm talking about, right? Okay. So what does that have to do with business? So fun story right? Here we go. So now that uh, the Kardashians are no longer on the E! News Network, they are now on Hulu. So how do you get people to watch the show? Right? So Chris, who is the mastermind of it all, Chris Kardashian, who has been married several times after to Jenner and whichever, but wants to be Kardashian, that, that's just hilarious. Uh, but she decides that 
we should involve there's a new there's a second sex tape so we see previews of chem crime oh, my kids what are they gonna think well they're gonna think that you're a hoe which if the shoe fits okay um like really like are, are you thinking about that now like like it's not like you can't google and find the old tape right so so what are we talking about uh but the best story that came out this week the best story was that it was all everything from start to finish orchestrated by chris kim What? Orchestrated by the three of them to create controversy because they know a fundamental truth about media. And that is, it doesn't matter what people think about you. Doesn't even matter the story. All that matters is that they're talking about you. Which is why, by the way, uh, do you remember Roseanne? Roseanne and uh, Tom. Okay, so Tom Arnold. So when they were married, they used to leak stories to Star Magazine. This was before there was TMZ, before there was the internet and stories would break. They would call and tell them where they are. So by the way, uh, Alicia Keys was on Oprah. And Oprah said, you know, it seems like, like you've done all of these things, but how come I don't read about you? And Alicia said, do you, you realize that a lot of, a lot of times a paparazzi gets tipped off by the actual star, right? And people were like, yeah, you know, they were, they were Alicia Keys just hating because she's not as big as fill in the blank. Yeah. Ray J decides to show the direct messages to show his proof oh shame on, you. shame on you chris chris oh what in the world are you doing are you for real like literally as i was reading through the message i was And then I couldn't stop laughing because I realized at that very moment that these folks will do anything, anything to stay relevant, stay in the media and to build the brand. Anything, anything. And so Ray J's problem was he said, hey, wait a minute. You know, we had talked about it, but now you're talking about, you know, Kim's denying that it happened. Girl, stop. Just knock it off. Kim's denying that it happened. She's saying that she was asleep and that he was doing these things and that she doesn't understand and all of the hooky loud, right? So that now there can be this brouhaha. So that now people will report the story. And so Ray J goes, wait a minute, this isn't fair. Like this is making me look like, like I'm a rapist. Like, like, come on, man. Like, cause they don't care. They will do anything to be famous, but I've got news for you. And I tell you this all the time, and this is probably not the first time or the last time you will hear me say it is that you get famous way before you get rich. So be careful what you do to get rich. Be careful. So now the kids are traumatized. Yeah. The kids are overwhelmed. You're reporting it on TV. And it was all a lie. Wow. Wow. So how does that relate to your business, right? So one of my mentors used to say all the time, oh, you want to be on the news? Are you interested in being on the news? Well, I tell you what, 
<laughs> he said, easiest way to get on the news is you'll be on CNN tomorrow. Kill your parents with like butcher them or something and make it gory and you can be on the news, right? Yes. But he said that as a joke. And I want you just to think about, will you do anything for money? And if you will do anything for money, then really you need to check your ego at the door because that's not the world I want to live in. So that's also not the people that I want to coach. So we don't do that. You know, we absolutely don't do that. I can teach you how to dominate the media. You know, I've been featured in USA Today, Entrepreneur, Smart Money, uh, Black Enterprise, uh, uh, Nerd Wallet. Um, gosh, there's, there's, I don't know. If you Google me, there's, there's, 3 million entries, right? Um, that's not the getting famous just to get famous by getting naked, uh, having a sex tape <laughs> is not the right way. Let, let me show you the way, right? Um, and let's go ahead and jump directly into the million dollar equation lesson. So as I talked to you before, is that I wrote the book, The Million Dollar Equation, right? Uh, nine steps to building your million dollar business. Uh, and what I use to rebuild back my million dollar business after I lost it all after 9-11. Uh, never fun, never exciting. <laughs> so I just want you to think about, you know, how do you go tell your mama she got to go get another job? Yeah, not fun, not fun at all. But what it did do, is the reason why I was able to rebuild it back so quickly is that I understood the framework, right? So many folks that are currently on podcasts on are pitching one particular concept, right? But they're not showing you the framework. I like to go deeper and show you what it needs to look like so that when you understand what those concepts are, what the framework is, then building it is not difficult and rebuilding it back was not difficult because I understood what those nine steps were and how to do them over and over and over again, right? So um, <laughs> here was the, the lesson that I learned. So last week I went to open a brand new bank account. I just recently moved. Um, to a new location, to a brand new state. And I said, you know, all of my bank accounts are in a whole nother state. It'd be great to just be able to drive down the street and, and go open this bank account. So uh, I walk in <laughs> and I was instantly hit with one of the million dollar equation theories that I say all the time. And this is, are you in the customer prevention business? Like, are you making it hard to do business with you? <laughs> right? Uh, what do I mean by that? Hey, stick around. I'll be right back. Uh, listen to this really quick message um, talking about the where you can go grab the book, The Million Dollar Equation, and I'll be right back. Hey, 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 MDE Nation. <laughs> Have you grabbed the original, the OG book, the book that started it all? the book the million dollar equation that was my original passion project where everybody kept asking me Michelle tell me how you rebuilt back your million dollar business how in the world did you come back from losing it all how in the world did you do it and I sat and I spent two weeks and I wrote the million dollar equation so it sounds exactly how I talk if you put my voice to it while you're reading it you will feel the essence of me but you will also learn some really great valuable lessons on how to build your own million dollar business yep you can grab it right there on Amazon Are you in the customer prevention business? <laughs> what do I mean by that? So, so let me tell you a quick story, right? Funny story. I was walked into the bank, um, as I was talking about before we, we took a break and, uh, I'm there like I normally am, right? Jeans and t-shirt and flip-flops. 
uh, got all of my documents, my articles of incorporation, uh, my EIN number, all things that I need to open the bank account. So I walk in, there's a security card. Security guard looks like she is maybe 80 pounds soaking wet. Like, what, what is she gonna do if, if somebody came to steal, right? And she's on her phone, uh, sitting next to all of the tellers. There's not a soul in this bank. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Not a soul. They close at five. Right? So I'm like, like, should I be worried that there's nobody in this bank? But but hey, you know, with online banking, with ATMs, like who goes in the bank anymore, right? Who goes in the bank? except for people who want to open an account or who need to do large transactions or who need to deposit a large amount of money that they don't want to put in the ATM or older people, right? All people that you should take care of. Hello? All people that you should take care of. Why, right? Why should you take care of the people depositing large sums, people who want to open a new account, um, people who are older. Why? Well, let's start with the older people, right? Um, old people, older folks, because I am officially now older, older people, we are stuck in our ways. We like to do things the way that we like to do things, and we don't like change. So guess what? We're going to stay with you. Right. So when we talk about million dollar equation, right, what what's the three biggest concept? We want them to stay. We want them to pay. And we want them to refer. Right. Guess what an older person is going to do? They're going to stay because they don't like to change. They're going to pay because they they will pay to write checks. They will pay to keep their account and they're going to refer to you because they're going to say, you know, I've been with blank bank for 30 years. They've always taken care of me. I'm not going anywhere else. Okay. That's the first person that walks into the bank. That is a great client for you. Second person who makes a large deposit. Well, the only way that the bank makes money is if you put money in it so that they can lend it out. Right. Because it's not like they take your 10,000 and put it into the safe right there. They put it into the safe, but it doesn't have your name on it anymore. Now it's just a digital number. Now that's all it is. And you take it out of different banks. You like the cash isn't there. It's just now there so that they can lend it. Another person that's going to stay, right? Because they just deposited money into your bank. They're going to pay because they are. <laughs> they want to keep that money. They want to have access to money. And they are, if you do the right thing, they will refer. Yes? Yes. And then last, a person wanting to open an account, guess what? They are your best customer too. They want to transact with you. They've chosen you in the same parking lot. There are four, four other banks, four other big banks. And truthfully, do you know why I chose them? You know why I chose them? Because one of their colors is orange and orange is my favorite color. And I was like, I'll give them a shot. So imagine my first impression when I walk in the door and I understand that quite possibly they're not excited about getting or serving older clients, people who have cash deposits and people who want to open accounts. So first thing that happened was everybody was confused about the fact that I wanted to open a business account. How are you confused? Then, then what are you doing here? If you don't understand, like, this is a good thing that I'm here to open a business account. What are we talking about here? Like, I, I was flabbergasted, right? Um, two people behind the teller had to ask two other people. Turns out they got a new manager. 
Um, and the manager was on the phone. So the other gal that apparently was the lead uh, did not come to the counter. She came out the door and said, you can follow me. She walked across the bank. Okay, now there's nobody in there. Remember, walked across the bank to a desk that she could sit behind and a high back chair and said, okay, now what do you want to do? Okay, now you could ask me that at the counter, right? Like, hi, I want to open a business account. Oh yeah, um, like, do you have your paperwork? Yeah. Oh, um, well, you realize that, um, um, you know, in order to open a business account with us, you need, and she rattled off the things that were all in my folder. Yeah, I realized it because I Googled you. I went online first to see what your requirements were and I wanted to be prepared. So I made sure that I had all of that before I left my house to come down. Oh, like she doesn't want to open the account. Oh, okay, well, we have a new manager and um, you have to be a certain type of manager to open a business account. First of all, what kind of policy is that? Like, like what do you have these policies in your business? Oh, we'll wait till we get to the to your MDA assignment, right? So I'm like, okay, so what kind of manager does she have to be to open my account? Oh, it has to be in that manager is at this other location, which is 15 miles away, by the way. And, um, you know, but you can't go there because she said uh, for you not to come until Monday afternoon. Well, first of all, remember, you didn't know what I wanted. So how do we know this? So now I'm starting to like, okay, do you not service like, like <laughs> entrepreneurs or or women or black women like like what is the problem here like what what is the problem like i should never have those thoughts i should never have those thoughts so i'm listening and i go well um okay so what do you suggest and she said well yeah we're not going to be able to open it today okay okay great thanks and so now she realized that i'm leaving and she says, well, here, come here. Um, now, also, she's she's 25 years younger than me, which, hey, look, you know, I was a young, a young entrepreneur. You know, I, I built my first million dollar business at 27. So I get being younger, right? But she, what is that? Um, why don't you give me your documents so I can get them ready for next week? No. She was like, huh? Like, why wouldn't you give me your documents? Well, because number one, it doesn't sound like you really want to open a business account for me. And number two, um, <laughs> I'm not sure that I want to open my business account here after this. Like, like I'm just, I'm just shocked, flabbergasted. So all of a sudden, here comes the, the new manager. And she says, uh, can I talk to you for a second? You know, are, please, like, we, we want your business... No, you couldn't because this that just went down here was really crazy. And there's nobody in this place. Right? So she pulls me into another room and tells me that, yeah, you know, that's why she was brought here. And I said, well, how unfair, how unfair? Because if it were me, uh, like none of these people could work for me. Like they would all be fired. Um, you've got a, You've got a rough and tough road ahead of you which is what I said to her. Here's what I wanna ask you. And this is your MDE assignment for this week is, do you have some of these hurdles for people that they have to jump over in order to give you money? Like, do you have it? Are you in the customer prevention business? Are you? Like, I want you to go and look at your business. Look at what you are doing on a daily basis and figure out if you are in the customer prevention business. Are you making it hard for people to give you money? Right? 
I like to make it easy for them to pay me. I like to make it easy for them to do business with me. I like to make it easy. Now I screen out folks I don't want to work with. I get that, but you don't even know who I am. So are you saying that you don't want people who come in the bank? Are you saying that you don't want new business accounts? Like what's going on here? And I can't imagine that if I wrote a letter to their corporate office, that this would be the policy. Because when you go to their website, they're begging you to open your business account there. Wow. So make sure that your words on your website, your words that you are saying to people, all matches what you really want for your business. And make sure that you are not in the customer prevention business. <laughs> Woo! I was hot. I was hot. By the way, got my business account done. Um, what's so funny is that I work with businesses, right? So I refer folks. Can you, my gosh, like I am an ideal client. I'm an ideal client for them. Woo! But no, no, they're in the prevention business. So we'll lovingly release them. We'll let them go and uh, we'll move on. So, hey, I'll be right back in a few minutes to tell you my message for Devin today. All right, see you in a minute. Hey, you, we are so grateful that you are part of MDE Nation. Are you enjoying this episode? Let me know what you think, especially if you have a question. I would love to answer it personally. You can go to rochelleshaw.com forward slash podcast to get more information about each episode or to be reminded of the MDE weekly assignment and so much more. Go to rochelleshaw.com forward slash podcast. Hey, 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 so we're back. So um, my message to Devin, right? Um, so every week, I always want to um, make sure that when I'm reporting, recording my podcast, that, that, you know, being a mom of teenagers, oftentimes I think that they kind of log out, don't really hear us when we want to talk to them. And so this segment is just life lessons that I learned, right? It's life lessons that, that moved me, that changed things, that, um, that make me say, ooh, okay, I'll never do that. And I don't want her to have to learn them at 55. I want her to learn them very, very early. So that's what this, this particular segment is all about. So um, I've been watching, uh, and paying attention to college sports for a long time. I happen to love college sports. Everything about college sports, I love. I love competition. I love their will to win. I love um, them all playing together. And I have been overwhelmed by the amount of successful, amazing athletes committing suicide. Um, elite athletes that have been training their whole life, having a bad day or feeling the pressure and feeling as if it's too hard to be great. And so every single one of their mothers, as I read the stories, were saying, we loved her whether she won or she lost. And the pain in their voice was unimaginable. And so, the lesson for Dev this week is all about that pressure to be great 
is only outside pressure, right? And guess what? Outside pressure does not count. Greatness and success is defined only by you, by my beautiful daughter. You get to decide what success means to you. You get to decide what greatness is in you. I believe that greatness is trying and trying your best and leaving it on the line. Greatness doesn't mean that you win every time. Greatness means that you gave your all every time. Totally different. Totally different. Creating your best life does not need a cosigner. Creating your best life does not need a cosigner. You get to create what your best life is. So if you ever met me in person or if you've ever talked to me or or um, when people introduce me, they say, hey, Rochelle, how you doing? And I always say, living the dream couldn't be better, right? Because I am living the dream every day. When things are good, when things are bad, I'm still living the dream because I have the opportunity at any point to change and change the directory that it never has to be what it was today. Tomorrow does not have to be what today was. Tomorrow can be anything that I want. So when I think of those girls who were number one in their field, number one sophomore player, number one soccer goalie, number one swimmer, and they felt like because they couldn't live up to other people's standards that they didn't want to live. My heart breaks. For them, we are all created in God's life. So different. And our differences are so that we can accept other people's differences. What makes us special and what makes us unique and what makes us amazing is that we are different. Because how boring would this world be if we were all the same? Tomorrow does not have to be like today. You get to choose. And you can change. Who would have ever thought I could come back from a hundred million dollar loss? But I did. Who would have ever thought this little black girl from a small town in California that's not LA could own one of the the largest telephone companies in the world. But I did. Could write four books after getting Mrs. Vinnie Carter wrote on my English paper, my God, you murdered the verb to be. None of that matters. None of those opinions matter. So what did Dr. Seuss say, right? So those who matter don't care, and those who care don't care don't matter. Don't care about that. So please know that your life is worth living, and you can create whatever life you want. And that best life does not need a cosigner. My name is Rochelle Shaw. I'm the author of The Million Dollar Equation. And uh, I love you for free. And this life is about making a difference. See you next week.